in power of the Word of God. The Word of God will cleanse you. But also a recurrent washing. Think about the Old Testament tabernacle. It reveres the purpose, the process. Remember, once a year at the Passover, the blood atonement was brought. Symbolic of Calvary, the blood. First, the blood sacrificed a brazen altar. I so often wonder what the priest could have looked like after all the blood that was shed. He had the blood completely covered over him. But then he would step away from the brazen altar where the shedding of the blood was. He would walk over to the laver, a place of cleansing. It was made, God told Moses to get all the mirrors you can get from the women. The men didn't have mirrors. Amen. And they don't need a mirror today. Say amen. For this purpose, we need to look into the glass the washing of the Word of God. And we see here, Jesus would conceive, remember, in the life of a woman, not a man, born of the Holy Ghost, the living mirror, the living Word of God. Before the high priest could enter even the outer courts, he must be cleansed by the blood and by the water, by the Word of God. Just say amen. Didn't Jesus tell the woman at the well, Those who worship me, worship me by the water and the Spirit. That's the only way we can worship God. So think now, as he gave the sacrifice, the priest, he leaned over to wash in the water, the laver, made of mirrors. The first thing he saw was himself. Even God's elect, the Levites, the priests, even God's chosen, The blood was applied. He was God's. He did the service. A a child of God. Chosen by God. But when he saw down in the labor, he reminds himself of who he is. See, don't you forget now that you're God's chosen? How much more shall we continue to look into the mirroring word of God, the glass, that we can see ourselves, to be reminded that we're God's, and also to be reminded who he was, warts and all. Don't forget who you are, and don't forget who he is. But knowing the word and the law, he knew the prescription, and the doing, the procedure, removed his defilement. The only way you can ever remove your sin is by the blood of Jesus. And the only way, listen now church, and those who are hearing, the only way you can keep sin out of your life is by continuing looking in the Word of God. You've got to let it mirror you on who you are. Failure to appropriate the cleansing available to labor was a, a serious matter. It could cause the priest's death. Didn't the Bible say the gospel It's the power of God and salvation. But apart from the gospel, there is no salvation. We need not only the radical cleansing of the blood of Jesus. The Bible says, remember now, if we walk in the light as he in the light, there's a daily cleansing through the blood of Jesus and the Son of God cleanses us from all sin. The Word of God, the Son of God, We always need a recurrent, an ongoing cleansing, a good washing of the Word of God. Ephesians 5 and 26 says that he may sanctify and cleanse it. He's talking about the church. He's talking about the body of Christ with the washing of water by the Word. The Word of God prepares us one day to see the Son of God. It cleanses us. One made available by the Son of God and the other made available by the Spirit of God. Remember again what Paul says, from glory to glory we're changed by the Spirit of the Lord. Church, we need to understand when the Word of God is preached and taught, it goes forth by the Spirit of God. And because the Spirit of God lives in you, 
And the Word of God in you, on you, it cleanses us. Amen. Ongoing from glory to glory. How many you know the process of what God does in the life of the believer? The desire and the plan and the pattern God has for every born again believer is salvation. That you're saved. And for salvation, there should be a sanctification. A cleansing. You're saved. You heard the word. You believe the word. You receive the word. You were saved by the gospel word. And now you're continuously walking in the word. Sanctification. And one day from glory to glory, it's going to be glorification. You're saved. You're being saved. And one day you're going to be saved. But you're saved right now if you're saved as much as you've ever going to be saved. Because God says in Christ Jesus, you remember, I read it to you, that we are seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That will cause Episcopalian to shout that we in him. 1 Peter 1, 18, 19 says, For as much as you know you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by the traditions of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Church, I'll tell you something. It's the living word that can give you life. There's no other word. The Bible says in the book of the Revelation, don't you add to this word and don't you take away from this word. We don't need another book. We don't need a Koran. We don't need a, a Joseph Smith. We don't need a Mormon guide. We don't need a, a anything, Hare Krishna. We don't need Buddha. We don't need any other method. We got the Word of God that brings about salvation. And you can only be saved by hearing the Word of God by receiving the Word of God, by believing the Word of God. And we can only be what God desires us to be if every day we submit to God before we even go out. What's the most important thing? How you look on the outside or how you really are on the inside. Let's pray together. Father, it's by your Word. You have declared that we are your children. God, by your grace and mercy and your good hand, God, in Christ Jesus, you have given us salvation. And we thank you, dear God, for the Holy Ghost that lives inside of us, evidence that we belong to you, God, bearing witness with our spirit that we are your children, the children of the Most High, one and truly own God, the Lord Jesus. Father, I pray those who are watching today, I pray, dear God, they would not only be hearers, be foolish just to hear and not receive the Word of God. And I pray, dear God, those who have received it, God will be hungry for it. Walk in it. Be changed from glory to glory. Better, newer, stronger, brighter for the glory of God. Lord, in this dark time in our nation, God, help us to shine like a candle on the mountaintop, God. Help us to be, Lord, a people who are not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, God, there be salvation today. If there's any doubt today that you're not saved, when we have this song of invitation, I want you to come. And surrender your life to Jesus. You may be watching, however it be, Facebook or YouTube, however you could get this message from God today. If you want to give your life to Christ, just bow before God. God save me. I'm a sinner, dear Lord. I believe your word. I'm drawn by your spirit, God. I want to live for you, Lord. I'm tired of living for me and the world and the devil. God, I want to live for you. Save me, Lord. The Bible said, whoever you are, whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. Lord, even so, let it be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And may you get the glory, Lord. We lift you up that you may draw all men 
unto yourself. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're going to have a song of invitation. You come as the Holy Spirit may lead you. Come, come quickly. Lord, be with Peggy and help her, Lord. Strengthen her, God. There I was, empty-handed. Come on, church, we need to pray. Pray for our nation. Pray for one another. And there you were, in the shadows, holding out your hand, you made me there. And now where would I be without you? Where would I be, Jesus? You were the voice in the desert Calling me out in the dead of night Fighting my battles for me You were my rescue story Lifted me up from the ashes you carried my soul from death to life, bringing me from glory to glory. You were my rescue story. You are, you are. You were my rescue story. You are, you are. You were writing the pages before I had a name. Before I needed grace, ooh, singing songs of redemption, cause every time I ran away, you were louder than my shame, and now where would I be without you, where would I be, Jesus, you were the voice in the desert, calling me You never gave up on me. You never gave up on me. You were my testimony. Oh, you never gave up on me. You never gave up on me. You were my testimony. You never gave up on me. You were my testimony. Oh, you were the voice in the desert, calling me out in the dead of night, fighting my battles for me. You were my rescue story, lifted me up from the ashes, carried my soul from death to life. Bringing me from glory to glory Cause you were my rescue story You are, you are You were my rescue story You are, you are You were my rescue story Amen, amen Don't forget now where he got you from Praise the Lord. God has a way of getting us. Amen? Amen. Linda, come close us in prayer with you, sister. God has a way of getting our attention. God can get you when nobody else can get you to help you and to deliver you. Amen? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come to you as a family today. We come to you, God, asking you for help. And we also come to you give for, and giving thanks. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you are doing in our lives because it's all working together for the good. We thank you for everyone here today. We pray that everyone will be safe, their families will be safe. And, Lord, we ask that you give us clarification on things that we don't understand. 
God, we want to also thank you for the wonderful word that is coming through our speaker, our leader, the leader that, uh, that is bringing us through. God has given it to him, and he's given it to us. And we love him, we thank you for him, and God, we give you all the glory and the honor. May we all know that we are, the purpose of being here is for us to work out our soul salvation. And in Jesus' name, we pray and give honor to you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Stay safe. God bless you. Hope to see you on Wednesday.